First, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 9. And when the queen of Sheba, now they say that's either in southern Arabia or some say it's in Ethiopia. And if it's in Ethiopia, it is 1,593 miles to Jerusalem. And that's an air. That's what you have. In other words, that's a straight line. That's not, you know, going to highways, to pathways. So even the pathways would be would be longer for this queen to come to Solomon. And why is she coming? Heard of the fame of Solomon. Well, he's building for this great God. He's got all this gold. He's got all this treasure. He has the wisdom of God. And came to prove Solomon with hard questions at Jerusalem. So she comes because of Solomon. She comes. She's got questions for Solomon with a very great company and camels that bear spices, probably all kinds of spices. So you're looking at the fruit of caravans. Caravans travel around from all over the known world. Spices would come from India, from China, from all regions of Africa, all around the world. And she's she seems to be a warehouse for all these things and gold in abundance and precious stones that be gems and when she was come to Solomon she communed with him of all that was in her heart and this woman is carrying a train of great wealth I mean you hear the stories of you know the stagecoaches in America traveling west and having a strong box of money and this woman had it all you know how much spices were back then? You know, there was no refrigeration for food. There were certain spices needed to keep food good and fresh or make it tastier. Uh, ointments for the skin and the condition of the environment they are with, with desert regions. So she brings all this and then she comes to Psalm with all his questions. 2 Timothy 2.15 2 Timothy 2.15. We find that the scriptures say, Paul writing to a young minister, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Be ready. Because 1 Peter 3.15, 1 Peter 3.15, I mean, you would, th you would think I would go to Timothy and Titus and say, you know, avoid foolish questions. That's not what we're doing. 1 Peter 3.15 But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you for reason of hope that's in you with meekness and fear. We don't know what these questions are, these hard questions, but the Bible doesn't tell us. It's not recorded. Did she come looking for God? Did she come? We don't know. Hard questions. Only questions that could be known would have been Solomon. And if she had gotten an idea that Solomon's wisdom and uh, wisdom and uh, knowledge came from God. Well, here's a man that can answer my questions. They could have been health questions. I mean, I'm 50, going to be 51 years old as far as my life. There's several things in my life that the biggest question of all has been health questions. We don't know. But there's only one person we are recording. She goes to Solomon. There's a woman in the book of, in, the, in the Gospels. She goes to everybody else before she comes to Jesus with a health issue. She spends all her money and the, the doctor, Luke, records it. But isn't it interesting? She's got spices. She's got gold. She's got camels. She's got all these things. She's got hard questions. Uh, Mr. Holy Spirit, yes. What were those questions? I'm not going to tell you. What? Job asked questions that questions that we might be asked when we get to the judgment, either saved or law. And one of the questions, I'm not going to quote verbatim, but what would you use your mouth for? That's a good question that might be asked. 
Because Jesus said, uh, every idle word shall a man give an account thereof. You would think that it would be recorded. Is it about God? Is it about money? Is it about situations? We're not told. Verse 3. And when the queen of Sheba has seen the wisdom of Solomon. That's interesting. Seen it, not heard it. What's she seen? Look at that miraculous temple that he built. Look at the gold. Listen to the singers. Watch them sacrificing. Just look how much this towns and cities and buildings and people and is that a gold rock right there? I ain't got gold and silver rocks where I come from. And she's probably all these horses running around. We'll get the horses in a moment. And the house that he had built. Is that his house or is that the Lord's house? Remember, he built he built a house for the Lord. He built a house for himself. He built a house for the Egyptian wife. He built houses of armory. It doesn't even mention, it's so much left out with this Queen of Sheba. And if it's Ethiopia, you know what could be quite interesting? Is there not going to be another Ethiopian person coming to Jerusalem, seeking questions to God, and coming home getting saved? I am not going to run the parallel, because like I said, it could be Southern Arabia or Ethiopia. If it's Ethiopia, did the Queen of Sheba put into that guy years and years and years later a seed? There's so much in the Queen of Sheba. And people, when was Jesus born? Not going to tell you. What color was Adam? Not going to tell you. Where did the colored man come from? Not going to tell you. I'll tell you that they, I'll tell you the size of the ark, two and a half by two and a half by one and a half. Yeah, that's not awful. I'll tell you, Solomon's going to put ten tables here. He's going to put ten together. So... We'll go through a whole list of genealogies and chronicles. Well, isn't God's importance not to what our importance are? And the thing is, not everybody cares about your Christian life. Not everybody cares how you got saved. And yet, it's a wonderful testimony. Not everybody's going to hear it. And the meat of his table. So she sat in the audience of Solomon's meal. And the sitting of his servants, the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, their clothing, their duties, the servants, the butlers, the candlestick man, everybody. His cupbearers also. And their apparel. So evidently everyone had their own different apparel. It looks like that, and I'm speculating here, but it looks like their job was by what clothing they were wearing. He had uniforms. He had uniforms. And the ascent went by, it would be the staircase going up, his ascent, by which he went up into the house of the Lord. Remember, the house of the Lord is high. It's on a mountain. You had to climb. That's why Jesus went up to Jerusalem. That there was no more spirit in her. Now watch. In verse 3, it says, in the house that he built, and then the meat of this table, and the tenants of the ministers, that house could be just his house. Then they speak about the Lord's house. She hadn't even seen the Lord's house yet before she sees his house. Like, wow, check out this table. Check out the people that serve him. You want to see something better? What could be better than this? Come see the house I built for my Lord. Whoa. And she said to the king, it was a true report, which I heard of my own land of thine acts. And of thy wisdom. So here is one nation under God in obedience. Look at the testimony of the heathen. And she heard of Solomon's wisdom that had come from God. Because it came from no one else. There were wise men. Not as wise as Solomon. And people, wouldn't you think people would be talking, yeah, I got this great answer for Solomon. Where do you think he got that from? you think he got that from University of Stupidity? Do you think he got that from the University of, of Jerusalem? you think he got the University of Numbskulls? The University of the three monkeys that don't see, don't hear, don't... Do you think he got those? No! It would be someone would have to say, his wisdom I, I understand comes from his God. 
of all the things he knows, all the things. The Bible says he knows more than all of the East. Job came from the East. And Job was wise. People think they're wise and smart today. You are not wise and smart to the people of the Bible. You know how stupid we are today with our education, our diplomas? We don't even know how they built the pyramids. We don't even know what Stonehenge is for. And now they're, finding, they're saying that there's a mystery light coming from the moon. We don't know what, you're smart. You got diplomas on your wall. And yet Solomon could build this big, humongous building for God and his own houses, and he didn't have diesel. He didn't have caterpillars. He didn't have cranes, and the job got done. They still didn't know how they moved all those rocks for the pyramids. We're really smart. How be it she's still speaking. I believe not their words until I came. She's an unbeliever. And you're going to have people who are going to come with you with hard questions. And they're going to be in unbelief. Now, some people will come with questions to mock you, but don't be surprised if somebody comes with you hard questions and they want to know. You can't just throw everybody out, you know. You don't know the how did they get all in the ark. You may, okay, that may be a stupid question, but what if someone's really seeking? What if that's a question to get in the know God? You got to try them out. I believe not until I came. My eyes have seen it. Well, the Bible says faith cometh by hearing. She's got a Connor modern Bible. She went to the movie. She, she saw the, the, the bouncy house. She saw all the decorations. She's a modern. I have seen with my, I, with my eyes. I have seen it. And behold, the one half of the greatness of thy wisdom was not told me. For thou exceeded, exceeded this, that's the only time that word shows up, the fame that I heard. You know, you're half, and you ever hear the expression, you're half the man I thought you were? That came out of the King James Bible. It's about Solomon, and it, its roots are in the wisdom that God has given one man, Israel, king. Happy are thy men. Happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee and hear thy wisdom. His employers, his employees, his servants. Blessed be the Lord thy God, which delighteth in thee to set thee on his throne, God's throne. Look what she's acknowledging. She's not acknowledging, okay, that's not my God yet. But your God has set you on the throne. The one that puts rulers in charge, even if it's Satan's ruler, I'm not saying Solomon's Satan ruler, but he needs permission from God, Job 1 and 2. But the final authority on a throne in the Oval Office, whatever, the Kremlin, whoever, whatever the, the office is of the nations of this world, God puts them in those offices. He said that the Pharaoh in Egypt, most wicked, the most wicked Pharaoh, he, he's a despiser, hater, and curse of the Jews. He got his just just resort, desserts. Nebuchadnezzar, he, he used him, the Jews. He got right with God. How wicked are these world leaders? Yeah, but God had a place to put them in there. Queen of Sheba understood that. To be king for the Lord thy God. Because thy God loved Israel. Ooh. To establish them forever. Ooh, look at that. She's acknowledging Israel as God's people. Therefore, made he the king over them to do judgment and justice. Now, remember what Solomon said? Lord, I need wisdom. And I need understanding to judge thy people. And look at her confirming those words. She, while she's here, has seen Solomon do judgment and justice to the people. And she's standing back like, wow. I thought my questions were hard. Solomon is declaring before people judgment of innocent and guilt. Those two women that came, this is my baby. No, this is your baby. That's my baby. No, this is my baby. That's your baby. How would you ever figure that out? Just give me a sword. Now, most people in the courtroom would be like, just take all their heads off. Okay, case up, but that's not the case. 
Who would ever thought of that? She gave the king a hundred and twenty talents of gold and spices in great abundance and precious stones. Neither was there any such spice as the Queen of Sheba gave the King Solomon. So she's got spices that no one else has. Their spices are in Ignatius to Arabia or Ethiopia. And she brought them just for Solomon. So there'd be great value in money. Neither was there any such spice as the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. And the servants also of Hiram, there he is again, he keeps showing up. I think you'll see him in glory. And the servants of Solomon, which brought gold from Ophir, it seems to be a great place for gold, brought argum trees and precious stones. Oh, there's one of them trees. What is it? It's the same thing in 1 Kings 10, 11. It's an argum tree. What's an argum tree? It's an argum tree. Evidently, somebody cut down all the argum trees to get the tree lovers all upset. There are no more. Or maybe they just have a new name today. People get upset with that argum tree because they don't know what it is. And the king made of the argum trees terraces to the house of the Lord. So here's the house, here's the temple of the Lord. He has added to the temple of the Lord with these trees of beauty or strength. He made terraces in addition to the temple. That house was beautiful. And the king's palace. So he added them to his palace. That's how wonderful these trees were. And harps and sultries and singers. Poor singers, excuse me. They make singers out. So this wood was able to be used for instruments. And certain wood has that priority. And watch. And there were none such seen before the land of Jews. So this is a rare wood. This is a rare tree and it's gone. Or it's by another name that we don't know what it is. I'm not going to throw the Bible away because of an algum tree. Give me a break. And it's probably changed in modern Bibles, which I don't care. I don't look it up. And King Solomon gave to the Queen of Sheba all her desire. Whatsoever she asked. Now, notice the expression here that you do find in Esther, and you find with King Herod. Ask of my half of my kingdom, I'll give it to you. I mean, you can ask whatever you want, but you're not going to ask for my whole kingdom. You're not going to ask beyond what I can give you. Solomon says, what do you want? He offers her a blank check. No restrictions. That's confidence. And that's also the character of the Queen of Sheba that she's not going to take advantage of her of his request. There are some people out there you would be afraid. You know somebody. If you were, ask me anything, you know it would be wasteful, addictive, or shameful for them to answer what you're going to ask them. Besides which she had brought unto the king, so she turned and went away to her own land, and she and her servants. That's interesting. So there she goes. There's the story of the Queen of Sheba. All right. Now, the weight of gold that came to Solomon one year, one year income, was 603 score and six talents of gold. Oh. Six, six, six. There it is. Verse 13. <gasps> Solomon has the mark of the beast. Revelation 13. Revelation 13. Revelation 13. I'm going to read you where the mark of the beast is. In the Bible. Way in the end of the Bible. Revelation 13. Uh, we'll just do 15. That's oh, 14. And he deceived them that dwell near. This is the Antichrist. By the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them, they that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound of the sword, 
and did live. And he had power to give life on the image of the beast. And the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive the mark in their right hand or in their forehead, that no man might buy nor sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Now here's wisdom. Psalms got wisdom, remember? Let him that understands and count the number of the beasts. For it's a number of, of a man. His number is six hundred, three score, and six. Was there a beast in Solomon's time that died and came back to life and somebody making an image? Is it a number of a man or is it his income? Six six here has nothing to do with Solomon and the tribulation. And the mark of the beast it is from years and years and years and years and years later that you need to worry about the 666. Today, oh, you know, if, if the government will have you put a, put a thing in your right hand to identify you, well, that ain't going to do me no problem. Go ahead. Because when that mark in your hand, the forehead does count, and it is for Satan, I'm going to be in glory, and that thing is going to drop on the sidewalk or wherever my body is. Now listen, if I get a medical disease where my mind is gone, and there's many ailments, and there, there are people who have that trouble. We had a guy die here on our street, leaving a nursing home. If that identification that you put in my hand is going to track me so I don't get hurt, or I don't get lost somewhere, be a comfort to my family that, okay, so we know where dad, we know where my husband is. He's safe. He's not hanging over a fence somewhere, having no idea where he is, dead. Put that mark in my hand. Because I don't care. I don't have nothing to do with the Antichrist. The only thing I have to do with the Antichrist is I am witnessing to people today about the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if the Lord does come in my time, the people who I'm witnessing to, if they don't get saved, they're going to go through the seven years. They're going to have to face that mark. If the Lord comes within my day. Now it may be off. It may be other people have to worry. But this 666. It's 666. It's not a number that the Jews have to worry about right now. Besides that which Chapman. That's the only word that shows up. And merchantmen brought. Chapman, they worked on the ships. They sealed the ships, made sure they were waterproof. We call it caulk. And merchants brought, and all the kings of Arabia. There's Arabia. So we do say in this verse, too, they said she, uh, Sheba could be southern Arabia, but here it says hey, Arabia. They know where Arabia is. And governors of the country brought gold and silver to Solomon. And King Solomon made 200 targets of beaten gold. 600 shekels of beaten gold went into one target. And 300 shields made he of beaten gold. 300 shields of gold went to one shield. And the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Second Chronicles 12, 9. You got a depreciation. Second Chronicles 12, 9. Solomon had gold. Israel's fallen in apostasy. They're going against God. 12, 9. So Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem, where we are, and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. Remember God told him to borrow? You're going to borrow from the Egyptians? The Egyptians are taking the borrow back. Right here. Why God said borrow. Because he knew the Egyptians would bring be coming back. Okay, you can give it back now. You're not using it for God no more. The treasures of the king's house and took all. He took all. He carried away the shields of gold, there it is, which Solomon had made. Instead of which King Rehoboam, that's Solomon's son, made shields of brass. Brass is way. I mean, you didn't get shields of silver. 
He didn't get shields of, go of stone. You went all the way down to brass. The next lower element of metal is iron. That's how much the economy has dropped. So here's targets and shields. I mean, can you imagine if when they had to use these things in war, they got these these golden shields and golden uh, targets. They're going to battle. The sun is shining and blinding the enemy. I, I can't see it. Where are they? It'd be heavy. And yet Jesus says, "I am the light. I'm your light, Israel." Is that not what Gideon did? They broke the lantern and light. You know, the Jews were to see when Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I am your light. I'm the same light that got you victory in Gideon's time. I am that same light that lights up this, this house you built for me. I am the city on a, on a hill. What were the king made? Okay. Uh, verse 16. And 300 shields he made, he had beaten gold. 300 shields of gold went to one shield. And the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. That's an armory. So here's another house in Lebanon. Now you're going to start getting the people angry. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory. Elephants, walruses, whatever. And overlaid it with pure gold. Come on, really? He took ivory... He said, oh, that's, that's a, wow, look at that. Ivory throne, that's good. Goldsmith, come here, yeah? Cover that whole thing with gold. Now, would not the animal people get really upset with Solomon? And there were six steps to the throne. Ooh, six seems to be his number. With a footstool of gold, which was fastened to the throne, so no one could take it. He had his throne, and down there was his footstool, and his footstool was one piece with his throne. All gold. I hope he has some pillows. I hope he has some padding. It doesn't say it, does it? It must have been all, if that was just all gold and, and ivory, that must have been very hard. It don't, I'm listening, the Bible mentions pillows, padding. Footstool of gold, which he fastened to the throne and stays on each side of the sitting place. That would be armrests or uh, railings. Stays on each side of the sitting place. That's the throne itself. And two lions standing by the stays. So here's his throne. Here's like a railing. You know where you get the imitation of this? It shows up every year at every mall. Santa Claus. He's got his throne, and he's got this railing. But Solomon has two lions. Have you ever seen somewhere, a house or a building, as you're walking up the stairs of the driveway, there are two lions there? I've seen them in Daytona Beach, and I've seen them in New London. Where did that come from? That comes from the Bible. Libraries have it. Libraries have it, yeah. So the next time you see those two lions, think about the Bible. Interesting, huh? Two lions by each day. Twelve lions stood there on the one side, and on the other side, upon the six steps, there was not the like made in any kingdom. No one had a throne like Solomon's. So there are 14 lions, two by him and and 12 on the stairs, the six stairs, one on the left, one on the right, one on the left, one on the right. He also had oxen holding up the brazen uh, labor. I believe that two of the cherubim were oxen and they were lions. Mm -hmm. Kind of interesting, isn't it? Uh, and all the drinking vessels, his cups, bowl, I mean, his cups, glasses of King Solomon were all were of gold and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Lebanon just the house of the forest of Lebanon were pure gold no Tupperware no plastic ware no China no porcelain gold 
Forget the silverware, goldware. None were of silver. Now that is, I'm telling you right now, that's remarkable. Can you imagine open up his dishwasher and there's just gold? Forks, spoons, knives, cups, saucers, coffee cups if they had it. Whatever the utensils, the, the, the gravy thing. Gold. The lemonade pitcher. Gold. Does he not say in the pro in Proverbs uh, something about his gold pitcher with golden apple, silver pitcher, golden apple, something like that? Well, there it is. It's all gold. And that's just the house in Lebanon. That ain't the place where the Queen of Sheba was and his house. This guy had luxury. He had it all from God. It was not anything accounted for in the days of Solomon. Solomon, how many forks you have? I have no idea. Well, come on, Solomon. You got to tell me how many plates you got. How many pots and pans do you have? I don't know. What's one thing you can tell me about your dinnerware? It's gold. Well, how much? I don't know. Isn't that interesting? For the king's ships, this would be merchant ships, went to Tarshish. You know Jonah 1-3? That's the same place that Jonah tried to go run to. He says, I want you to go to Nineveh. He got in a boat heading to Tarshish. They believe that's kind of like Spain somewhere. So Jonah was going to a place that had great wares. He just didn't go to where God wanted him to go. With the servants of Haram, there he is again, every three years, once, came the ships of Tarshish, doesn't tell you how many, bringing gold. And you mean you got enough? And silver, silver was uncountable. <laughs> what do you need that for? Ivory, uh, <laughs> There you go. It's making him mad again. And apes and peacock. Why? <laughs> he have his own monkey zoo or something? Kind of weird. Gold, silver, ivory, and some apes and peacock. Every three years they came. I didn't know apes came from Tarshish. And King Solomon passed all the kings of the earth in riches and wisdom of all times. There's no one's going to supersede the wisdom of Solomon but Jesus Christ. No matter how much you get your head in the clouds. And all the kings of the earth sought the presence of Solomon and queens to hear his wisdom that God had put in his heart. So when the Queen of Sheba came, she knew she was coming to a man that had God's wisdom. There it is. Anybody who came to Solomon knew I'm going to ask a man that God gave him wisdom. And again, just follow up with 2 Timothy 2.15, 1 Peter 3.15. It's accountability of Solomon to answer by the word of God to those men. And you got to wonder with the Queen of Sheba, again, if that's Ethiopia, many, many, many years later, is that going to be the Ethiopian eunuch? They say in Ethiopia, eunuch, in Ethiopia that eunuch has a testimony of going back and witnessing to everybody and people getting saved in Ethiopia by that eunuch. I've talked to missionaries in Ethiopia. And they brought every man his present. They did not bring freedom. They brought payment. Vessels of silver. Solomon didn't need that. I don't need silver. And vessels of gold. I'll take that, he said. And raiment, clothes, harness. How come that's only plural? Vessels of gold, vessels of silver, plural. Raiment, which is plural. Spices, horses. Mules, a rate year by year, but a harness. It, shouldn't it be harnesses? 
Isn't that particular? You say, why? I don't know. I just noticed it. Everything's in the plural, but that. And Solomon had 4,000 stalls for horses and chariots. That's a lot. And 12,000 horsemen who he bestowed, bestowed in a chariot, cities, with the king at Jerusalem. So he's got all this for his chariots. He loved horses and chariots. And he reigned over all the kings from this river, even unto the river of the Philistines, that's down south, to the border of Egypt. Look how far he's gone down. And the king made silver in Jerusalem as stones. He to see little Davids out there, the shepherds, they're picking up stones with, with their uh, slingshots and hitting cans and hitting bulls and Try and see if I can knock that bird out of the with silver. Building little fire pits with silver. And cedar trees made he as sycamore trees, common trees that are in the low plains in abundance. So Solomon did not wipe out the tree population, as they say today, all the cedar trees today that are all been wiped out because of Solomon and Harm. No, he's growing them vast and more and a lot more. A sycamore tree is a common tree. And those cedar trees, man, they're just like a common tree around here. Someone else got rid of those, those cedar trees, not Solomon. Solomon believed planting after he cut one down. And evidently he planted more for every one he cut, according to the scriptures. I forget what they call that. And they brought unto Solomon horses out of Egypt, and out of all lands. Okay, before we finish this chapter, we must go to Deuteronomy 17, 16. Solomon heard God. Solomon got his prayer answered by God and more. Solomon, Deuteronomy 17, 16. Though he heard God, and he knew what the Lord should should have known the law, the priest should have had a mind. Did, did not Nathan remind David of his sin? Did not Gad remind David of things to be? Did not David seek the priest and say, uh, we did this thing with the ark wrong? Come here, guys. What? How are we supposed to do this with the ark, uh, sir? Yes. It's supposed to be carried on stage by the family of Kohath. Got it. Did it wrong. Let's do it right next time. Someone should have came up to Solomon. Hopefully they were faithful enough to say, Solomon, yeah, we're not supposed to go back to Egypt. Who told him that that Egyptian bride had to go somewhere else but not in Jerusalem? Where did he learn that? Somebody had to tell him. Someone was faithful in Solomon's kingdom to say, you're wrong. So verse 17. 16. But he, this is the king, shall not multiply horses to himself. Yep. He did that wrong. Nor cause the people to return to Egypt. He did that wrong. To the end that they should multiply horses. That's a double, triple whammy. For as much as the Lord had said unto you, ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Uh-oh. Neither shall he multiply wives himself. You blow that one. That his heart turned not away. He blows that one. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. He blew that one. Look at those two verses he just blew. He had great wisdom from God, didn't he? Didn't he have the knowledge of God? But he had no understanding what the law said. The law said what we just read about the gold, the silver, and the horse. You notice how that's all fitted together. He failed. And he will sin. We're not going to read it in Chronicles, but he will sin by marrying multiple wives, and they will get him to all God's worship. Small G-O-D-S. 
Now the rest of Acts of Solomon, first and last, are they not written in the book of Nathan the prophet? That's David's prophet. Da Nathan said, David, thou art the man. I hope Nathan was planning to go up to Solomon and say, hey, you're not doing too good, buddy. Third, respectfulness of your father, respectfulness that you're the king. I am the Lord's priest, and the scriptures say you're doing wrong. Maybe, I don't know. And in the prophecy of Ahijah the Shuhite, I mean, Ahijah goes up to Solomon and tells him, you're doing wrong. That would be 1 Kings 11.29. 1 Kings 11.29. And in the visions of Ido, the seer, against Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, Jeroboam, he gets that, that prophet that comes up to him. One of them's got a new coat on him. One of them grabs that new coat and rips it in 12 pieces and hands him 10. And the two pieces are going to stay with Rehoboam, but these 10 you're going to take the northern tribe. And Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel 40 years. Now, is that including the years that him and David reigned together? Solomon slept with his fathers, and he was buried in the city of David, Jerusalem, his father. And Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his stead, and then we close. We close. A man that knew the voice of God. I've never heard the voice of God. I won't hear the voice of God till I die or the rapture. And even though he heard the voice of God two or three times in his life, at least two, he still went against the Lord. So by saying, show me God, show me a sign, show me a wonder, show me a miracle, and you still end up disobeying the word of God.